good for Texas. This video is brought to you by BeatingBlackAndBlue.com. BeatingBlackAndBlue.com, my brand new book, Beating, uh, Being a Black Police Officer in America Under Siege. I always wanted to write a book about that. When I was a police officer, I felt like I was getting beat for being black or beat down or criticized for being black as a police officer and then being a police officer in general. Uh, I was getting beat down, man, and I felt like there was a, a, a time and a place where I would write a book to reflect how I became a police officer, the things that go on in the police department, things that are police are being criticized about that are illegitimate, you know, what's a justified shooting or not, uh, George Floyd. Like, I, I got a chance to talk about everything I wanted to talk about, and there's no books out here like that. Available right now for pre-order. November the 30th is the launch date. You can get the signed copy, non-signed copy. Link is in the description section. Let's get into this. Ladies and gentlemen, Texas and their abortion ban. Like, here's a couple things I think that's important that you know, is that abortion is banning anything after six weeks, right? Anything after six weeks. At six weeks is normally when women have morning sickness and fatigue and all of the different things that, that go on that probably would be an indication that you're probably pregnant. Um, and also, during six weeks, the ears, the nose, the arms, legs begin to develop in the fetus. Um, it, it, of course, it's little. I, I don't think this is a an example of it. This is a little further along. Of course, it's little, but it, unobstructed, it's going to turn into a person like me. So that's why I feel like abortion is never the the right solution to the problem. And, and let me let me make this statement. I want to be very clear for anybody watching this. I am pro life and pro choice. Let me let me explain why I say that. I am pro life because I believe that life starts at conception, not perception. And once you get doing the nitty gritty and that conception happens, that is a human life. Unobstructed, that is a human life. Now, when I say I'm pro-choice, meaning that you had a choice, either in the bedroom or on the couch, you had a choice. You in there bumping and grinding, pumping and sweating, and now you got a kid. Your choice was in the bedroom or wherever y'all was at. Your choice ain't at the hospital. Your choice ain't at the clinic. I, I'm just leaving it out there. And I know there's people going to say, well, Brandon, what about raping? What about raping, incest, and all this other stuff? It's funny that people bring it up because that's less than 1% of all of these cases. I'm talking about the 99.9% .9 of y'all, or whatever that number is, at, at, at the bare minimum, it's 99% of y'all. I'm talking about what y'all doing. Completely preventable. 100% preventable. You shouldn't be up there doing what it takes to make a baby if you ain't ready for a baby. 99% of y'all. Now, let's talk about the 1%. I still feel like the life starts at conception. And if you want to take a baby's life, that's murder. And if you got raped, it's very unfortunate. It's, it's, it is unfortunate. My grandmother was raped at the age of 12 and had my mama. Thank God she did or I wouldn't be here. So it's not the baby's fault that that happened to you. And in many cases, it's not your fault. You had nothing to do with that. That person should go to hell and burn. But at the end of the day, it's not the baby's fault. And you can give that baby up for adoption. You can, you can use other choices. If it's incest or whatever the case may be, you can use other choices. There's other ways to handle these situations than just taking the life. But let me reiterate, 99% of what's going on here are people who are making decisions to be, to, to, to be involved with one another. Like I say on my live streams, they want to play video games. And then when the rubber hits the road, they want to say, oh, no, my career is more important. Well, you shouldn't have been laying up. I'm not going to say nothing. See, if you follow the Bible, we wouldn't have a problem with this. You shouldn't fornicate. It's very simple. You shouldn't fornicate. You shouldn't fornicate, which means you shouldn't be having relations outside of marriage. And, and if you did, if you waited, and you were equally yoked with somebody that you got married to, the likelihood of you even going down this path is almost slim to none. Anyway, I'm not going to get on. Let's let's keep continue to talk about Texas. Well, Texas made this this particular ban. Uh, people are going out of their mind. Women's rights. It's a woman's body. It's a woman's right to choose. It, it's a woman's right to choose. No, no, no. Time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. It's a woman's right to choose until it starts affecting other people. Because if a woman is ready but the man ain't ready, she can just do this and he uh, he's obligated for the rest of for the 18 years. If she not ready and he is, he just lost his child's life. The child can be slain because she not ready. How how what how does this make this make sense to me? For women out here that are saying it's my body, my choice. If it's if it's your body, your choice, you should have chosen the bedroom. When you're making this decision at Planned Parenthood, 
You are affecting other people's lives. It's not just your choice. It's your choice that everybody else is responsible for. Now, if women could have children and the father have no responsibility, meaning that the father has no responsibility, and I'm going to tell you why I think that's problematic. If the father has no responsibility, then it's your body, your choice. But that's not, that's not the case. You are going to lump him in to get your paycheck every month. You're going to lump him in to, to make him responsible for, for y'all's decision, although it was your decision to, to kill or to, to, to keep alive. That's the problem. That's the problem that I have. You want your cake and eat it too. You want to say, oh, I could do it much sleeping around and, and building my mileage, getting bodies, but then I don't want the re repercussions of the fallout. I want to have the pleasure without the pain. You can't, that ain't how it works, young lady. So if y'all want to learn more about this, you can go on the Tatum Report. We wrote an incredible article article about this. Uh, River wrote this article. She won uh, uh, Writer of the Month last month. So shout out to River for writing this article. Incredible article. You can you can click here and look at the law. I'll put this in the description section. Um, I think that this should be mandated across the United States of America. You're talking about, you talk, you're referring to a, if you want to make this a federal thing, it should be a federal protection of, of the unborn. It should be a federal protection of the unborn, which means that we are protecting the life of the unborn, which I would argue is a, is a constitutional violation of somebody's right to life. Uh, you, you have a right to live. Just because your mama was, was, was uh, you know, I, ain't gonna, I don't even want to disparage women like this, but just because your mom was sleeping and creeping don't mean that you got to die over it. That ain't, ain't your fault. That's her fault. You should be able to live. And we should we should bolster uh, alternate opportunity, right? You know, like some things that me and my wife does, we, the things that we do or we are available to do. We had an opportunity, but the young lady changed her mind, which is fine because she she chose life. However, we told her, if you want to keep the baby, because she was struggling with, with giving the baby up for adoption, at, you know, at the 11th hour, she was struggling with it. I think the, the parents wanted to, wanted to uh, give them a, a COVID shots. I mean, not COVID shots, but the, the, the um, wanted to give them vaccines and stuff like that. And she was really struggling with it. And we said, look, she wasn't in a, in a, in a, a good economic position to, to do, give the best, the baby, the best opportunity. Right. Um, the dad wasn't around. And so we said, look, if, if you want to keep the baby, we'll support you. You know, we, we're not just running our mouth and just talking. We'll support you. We'll, we'll, we'll help you get through this if you want to keep the baby. But at the end of the day, she felt it was best that the baby had was with a family that was stable, that can give the baby a better opportunity, which kudos to that young lady. I'm not going to say her name, but kudos to that young lady for making that decision. You know, and I'm not going to talk about on my own personal life. When I when I do seminars and stuff like that, I tell people to, what really happened in my life in person. I just don't want this stuff to get out online because I know my son be watching these videos sometimes, and I and and I, I he, he I don't want him to be involved in that. Now, I believe that people should be making better decisions on the front end. You have a choice to make on the front end. These abortion laws that allow people to just have it willy nilly. Uh, is causing not only women to be irresponsible, but it also caused men to be irresponsible and, and, and caused them to not, you know, take care of their responsibilities in the sense of being there for the child. You know, because they could say, oh, no, I, I can sleep with you. We could play video games. But then when the rubber hit the road, I'm out of here. You better do what you got to do. I'm out of here. Hoping that this woman make a decision to get rid of the child. That is a cowardice mentality from a man. It's cowardice. It is cowardice. You know, I my son was not expected. I was not married at the time, which I would argue all you young brothers do not have children out of wedlock. But I was not married. However, when she told me I'm pregnant, I said, I don't care what situation I'm in. I don't care how I feel. I don't care nothing about my future because I made a decision to do X that led to Y. And it doesn't matter what my ambitions are or none of that other stuff. I made a decision and I'm going to support 
the decision that I made. I'm going to stick by this young lady no matter what. I'm going to take care of my responsibilities. I don't care if we argue. I don't care if I don't like her. I don't give. I don't care. None of that matters. I have an obligation by God because I, I didn't do did something he told me not to do, but two wrongs don't make a right. And I have an obligation as a man to say, you know what? I shouldn't have never been doing that and, and I wouldn't be in this position. But while I'm here, I need to make the best out of this position and do my part. And 11 years later, here I am. And I have an incredible child and my child loved me and I love him back. And it wasn't had nothing to do with him. He didn't choose to be born in, in, in this situation. But as an adult, as a man, you take responsibility for your actions. And I guarantee you, if women wouldn't, you couldn't force them to go to a clinic somewhere, how many men would be willing to, you know, to play video games and then, and then dash? Not too many, because you, you play them and you dash, you, you caught on the hook. Support. You know what I'm saying? And that child support is deadly. In, in, in many cases, especially the more successful. If you're a bum, child support don't mean nothing to you. If you're getting paid under the table, child support means nothing to you. You don't have to do nothing. You have no obligations. You're a bum. But if you are trying to do what's right and you're trying to excel and be the best version of yourself, um, and, and Lord forbid if you'll become a billionaire, you finna get raped. You finna get raped. And my body, my choice is now taking advantage of you know, you her choosing you. You know what I'm saying? Like, anyway, I I, I ain't gonna even go there. But you know, I, I kudos to Texas. I think this should be every state in the union should have at least a heartbeat bill. And I think this is kind of what they're considering because at six weeks you can hear the heartbeat. However, I would argue the heart can beat. The heart is probably established beating before this. Is just that the ultrasound can pick up the heartbeat at the frequency at least at six weeks. So I think every state should adopt this. Stop being a slut. Stop slutting it up. Okay. Stop, stop, you know, messing with all these women and you're not taking your responsibilities. It's really that easy. It's like drinking and driving. It is impossible to have a child. If you're not playing video games, it is impossible to get a DUI and, and it stick. I'm saying you actually go and get convicted of a DUI. If you ain't been drinking, you don't drink, and drive, you'll never get a DUI. You'll never get a DUI. Could you be charged with a DUI? Depending on how you react in the FSTs and stuff. There could be signs and symptoms that you are impaired. As long as you're not using drugs or drinking, you will be fine at the end of it. If you are not playing video games and, and, and messing around and doing all this old crazy stuff, then you wouldn't be in this position. You wouldn't be in this position. And two people have to be responsible enough to take accountability for their actions. Anyway, I could talk about this for three years straight. But I want you to watch the rest of my videos. Like, subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell. Y'all know the drill. I'll see you on the next one. I'm out.